everybody. Welcome back to my studio at Visual Philosophy. My name is Dana Harris Seeger. Today I want to talk about how I prep my plates. This is a copper plate for etching or doing engraving or dry point, anything that is an intaglio process. You can also use a zinc plate, uh, but it requires different types of acid um, to do the etching process. So today I have a copper plate, but the, um, the prepping methods that I'm going to show you today could be used for either copper or zinc. Um, so let's go. Gloves are always helpful for this process because it's kind of messy. The first thing that I like to use is putt's pomade. And putt's pomade is a metal polisher and it's meant for um, actually the print industry. So I don't know if they make it anymore, but I have a few old cans and you can also get something like Brasso or a metal polisher that works pretty well. And usually what happens with plates, copper or zinc plates, is that they'll come, you know, even from the art supply store, if you get them uh, that way, they'll still come, you know, specifically for etching, but they'll come with like a just a sort of a film of either oxidation or whatever uh, from storage. So you wanna get that off, otherwise that will actually create a tone on your print, which is probably not what you want. Um, so I, in order to start with a totally clean white, uh, white in the sense that if you were to put a white piece of paper on it, um, you know, and it pulls off, then you're not gonna get any kind of tone um, from the plate itself. So that's the goal is to just polish it so it's nice and smooth and it's not gonna hold any ink because the way that etching works is there's grooves in the plate that hold the ink and then everything else is wiped off and wiped clean. So if this area, the area we want to stay white, is not polished and totally smooth, then it will hold a tone of ink and it will look gray or whatever color you're printing in. So the goal is to just have the ink be in the areas that we draw. So what we're gonna do first, if we're using the uh, metal polisher, the putts pomade, is just to open it up. And it's a little bit um, abrasive. Most of these, uh, methods are going to have some abrasion so that you actually polishing the surface. So I just use a rag, this is like, you can use t-shirts, this is I think an old um, sheet, pillowcase, and I like to cover my surface too because it's going to um, get a little bit dirty. And we're gonna polish the whole plate, but we'll do little kind of sections at a time. So I just get some of the Putz pomade and then I start making little circular motions. And you can see it'll start to darken and it kind of gets dirty looking. It'll even get dirty looking on the rag and get some more. And the more you do, the more times you do this process, the shinier it'll get. So we're going to be buffing down, we'll just do like a quarter to show you. We're buffing, buffing, buffing. And you start to see maybe there's some scratches in it. And you definitely want to get out to the corners. Make sure that there's no sharp edges. Sometimes when the, the plates are cut, there's a little bit of a sharp edge and you don't want to cut yourself on that. So you can get a little file and actually file it down. So as I'm doing this, you can see it's starting to get dirtier, but then as I keep doing it, I just keep rubbing the polisher in there. I can switch to a cleaner part of the rag. And as I do this, it starts to get shinier and it sort of cleans itself. And what's happening is 
it's like a tiny tiny micro grit and so as you're polishing the grit on the rag and the metal just takes off that first coat So already, you can see a difference. It's looking more mirror-like and shinier. And if I were to do this three more times in the same area, it would get even shinier. So that's the goal, because the shinier it is, the smoother it is, and the less likely it will hold ink. And then because this Pome, because this polisher or any polisher is kind of greasy, you can feel it sort of glide along there. Um, what you want to do once you're totally finished and the whole plate is done, preferably three to four times, then you'll take a degreaser like um, this is Simple Green, you can use uh, Windex, something that's going to clean the surface. And what I do is run it under water, and you can see that it'll bead up initially, and then you spray some of that on with a, not with your greasy hand, but with um, a sponge or a, your bare hand, you can rub in the, um, the, the degreaser and then rinse it again, and you'll see that it should flow off in a nice sheet. It shouldn't bead up and sort of do these long legs. What you want is just to have a nice, covered sheet of water on the uh, plate. So the other method that I've used before is vinegar and salt. So this is just white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, pretty cheap, um, and a little bit of salt, just regular Morton salt. And you can also add bon ami, which is um, just an abrasive, again, slightly abrasive uh, cleanser and or whiting which is just like um, calcium carbonate. Whiting has very, it's like a fine white powder. And again, it's used in the print industry. So you can get a hold of that from a, from a print shop or from an art store whiting. Um, but you can also find this Bon Ami powder cleanser. And this one works the best I find because it's not super abrasive. Some of them are too abrasive and you'll actually scratch your plate. So what you want is something that's powdery, um, but not too, um, you know, not too abrasive. So I put probably, I don't know, half a teaspoon of salt into um, three ounces of vinegar. And this is pretty much all I have left right now, but you'll definitely want to shake it up each time because otherwise it'll settle, the salt will settle. And what I do, there you go, is put a little of the Bon Ami. I'm gonna switch sides now and do this part. Put a little of the Bon Ami or whiting down on your plate. Squirt a little bit of the salt and vinegar mixture. And you'll see, you'll start to see what um, ratio you get with the salt, with the water, sorry, the liquid and the powder uh, because you want to make sort of a paste, just like the putts pomade was. You don't really want to make it too liquidy um, or too um, or too dry, or it won't work. You can also use this in conjunction, and maybe I'll do that too. I'll sort of see what it looks like when it's just by itself, and then what it looks like when it's there. And you can see how it's interesting that the putz pomade is darker, right? It transformed it to a darker part at first. And the vinegar, um, which is acidic, has kind of etched the surface into a, a lighter um, version of copper. So, but we do the same thing. We just kind of buff it. Slightly abrasive. I'll keep polishing.
I find that the brass or the burnishing, uh, the metal uh, cuts pomade actually goes, I feel like a little bit faster because it's kind of meant to do that. Um, it takes a little bit longer or more, um, more coats to get the whiting or the bone and knee method. But it's starting to get shiny now. Either way, you use a lot of elbow grease. <laughs> it's all about the elbow grease. Well, theoretically, this middle part will be the most polished because it's had both of them. And again, you still want to do the same kind of degreaser just to get everything to a nice even surface if you use the vinegar whiting method. Vinegar salt and whiting method. Alright, so that's that one. And they both have a smoother look, but the the Putz Pomade is definitely more mirror finished, definitely more polished. So if you have access to that, that's what I would recommend. But doing this a few more times will achieve similar results. And then again, finish with your Simple Green or Windex underwater, let it dry, you can let it air dry or you can blow dry it with a here. Either way, then you're ready to coat either hard ground, um, and the hard ground or soft ground won't stick unless you've degreased it. Just so you know, um, it'll kind of flake off. So you definitely want to make it less greasy. Um, you can apply hard ground, you can do dry point. Either way, uh, you're ready to start image making.